Good morning. Another beautiful Monday morning. Glad to have you joining us this morning. Hi, Jackie. Good morning, Gail. Looking forward to spending a few minutes with you this morning as we get our week started. It's uh, mid 80s today, beautiful sunny day, nice breeze, low humidity, perfect, perfect weather. Hi Rita. We won't uh, wait too long here with the preliminaries. Um, We did have our uh, monthly Second Sundays uh, prayer gathering last night, and we uh, met down at Civic Center Park, downtown St. Joe, <clears throat> and uh, had some other churches join us, had a couple other pastors there, but had at least, uh, at least four other churches represented, um, and just spent some time worshiping the Lord. It was, it was uh, a beautiful evening for that wind it was really calm when we when we started and as we uh, were singing in uh, worship uh, a really rather strong breeze picked up about our third song and uh, it just felt right it just felt like the Spirit of God was moving among us and uh, later as we went out the the wind diminished but but in that moment it was uh, uh, pretty special pretty special feeling so glad uh, those of you who could come out last night joined us and for those who couldn't uh, mark it on your calendar for next month the second Sunday evening of the month this is uh, something we're gonna do monthly not always downtown but rotate it uh, we'll see what what uh, new uh, <clears throat> things Josh comes up with as far as uh, possibilities but for now, uh, we're kind of rotating out in the community and back in the sanctuary. So I look, look to be uh, back in the sanctuary in October, but not, uh, not for sure about that. Um, but just a good time. I don't see anybody telling me that I'm sideways today. That's a good thing. Hi, Patty. We'll give it just another minute here and we'll, we'll jump on. Um, So as we've been, uh, as we've been uh, giving a more uh, purposeful focus on prayer, it certainly, um, certainly has drawn my attention over the last several months. We've, we've been meeting um, really since last fall, we were meeting on Sunday evenings to pray for a new pastor uh, specifically and for our church, of course. And uh, as we turned over into the new year and, and uh, Josh became the, uh, the obvious choice and, and uh, as that process went about, we continued to pray. And I can remember even when Josh came in February, I believe, I believe it was in March that we met on the second or third Sunday evening uh, just to thank God for all the answered prayer. And, and uh, for uh, connecting us with Josh in the way he did and the manner which he did and what a blessing it was. And really from that point forward, once or twice it might have been on the third Sunday, but we've met monthly. So it's been like seven months in a row that we have purposefully met uh, once Josh was on board for prayer. And uh, certainly uh, 
last night was the second time we were in the city, uh, out in the community, uh, for a prayer walk. And so, uh, during those months, my my attention has been caught again by prayer. And once you focus your attention on prayer, there are so many other so many other things that come into your mind. And so, I'd like to talk about that uh, just a little bit. I wish I could I wish I could report that I discovered. How to make prayer easier, um, the five secrets of uh, easy prayer, or some such nonsense. But uh, I've come to the conclusion that prayer was never uh, meant to be easy. God didn't create prayer for uh, for our ease. Um, it's a difficult thing, and it, it's difficult because it changes us. It's it's uh, it's something that if we will focus in on and uh, bear down on uh, it will change us and I think that's that's the purpose of prayer as much or more than us changing God somehow which uh, he is unchangeable we know um, um, I know that one thing we can do to make our prayer times easier and this is just a bonus I'm just throwing this in but these little these little gadgets that we have this one this one that I'm looking at now even um, they they're just little tiny devices that become a great big distraction for us and and uh, i think i know myself i would do well to completely turn my phone off um, when i go to my prayer time and uh, i know we have so many concerns in the world but uh, i wonder how we can expect god to have I, I wonder how we can expect to have god's full attention uh, when he doesn't have ours so that's that's a that's a bonus today um, next time you go into your prayer closet when you go into that special set aside time of prayer um, just completely turn your phone off the the world can get by without you uh, for a few minutes and give God your complete attention I think that would behoove us all um, so I will listen to my own advice Thank you for that. You're welcome. Okay. So lately I've been contemplating, and I think I did a, a devotion on this a few weeks ago, but I've been contemplating what does it mean to ask anything in his name? <clears throat> when I grew up, I can't remember a time when I didn't end a prayer in, in Jesus' name. Amen. Um, for Jesus' sake, amen. In Jesus' name, amen. Those, some variation of that has been my history. I mean, I, I, I don't remember being taught to pray that way necessarily. It's just I grew up praying that way. So obviously by watching others' examples, however I first learned to pray, that that uh, was, a, was a part of every prayer. And I didn't really consider a why or, or how I got to that point. It's just... Um, that's that's how we prayed um, in chapter 15 14 14 15 16 of John I believe um, Jesus mentions many times um, that we can ask for anything in his name and it will be done for us now that's that's quite a promise we can ask for anything in his name and it will be done for us So adding a few words at the end of any prayer I pray uh, gets us the results that we're looking for. That just, that's, wow, that's really something. The only problem is we all know, both from personal experience and from others, that there are many prayers offered in Jesus' name that aren't answered. And that drives us to a tougher question is, did God bite off more than he could chew? Did he make a... Did he make a promise that he can't keep? Did he aim too high? Was his promise too lofty? And he just can't follow through with such a lofty promise. Now we could do something like that. We could make a promise that we can't follow through on. We can make a lofty promise. There's nothing too big for God. We know that. Um, we know that he is more than able. Ephesians, 
in chapter 3 of Ephesians, um, verse 20, it says that he is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think. And if that's true, and we know it is, then what is the problem? If, if it's not him being able to follow through with his promises, then the problem must be, must be me. Ouch, that kind of hurts. But that's why the examination of prayer is so difficult because when we, when we do examine it, it causes us, excuse me, it causes us to examine ourselves. In James chapter four, we're told that we ask and do not receive because we ask with the wrong motives for our own pleasures. But wait, if we look at the other promise, then if we add in Jesus' name to the end of all our selfish prayers, shouldn't he still grant our wishes? Jesus said, ask me for anything in my name, didn't he? So there's the dilemma. And I don't, I'm not saying all this to confuse us. I really want us to understand. I want to understand. Um, what he means by this and how this affects me and, and how I proceed in my prayer life and what I ask and, and how I ask and all those things. So I'm going to share with you what I've come to conclude this means, ask anything in my name. Imagine for a moment that you are adopted. And the family that adopted you is uh, let me think. Let me see. Just one second, please. I got to read this. All right. Um, so you're adopted. The family that adopted you is a father and his son. And uh, you fit into their family. They take you in, and uh, life is good. And as the father ages, as the family ages, um, he's no longer able to take care of his business the way he could. It's just too big. It's a successful large business. And uh, so he brings his son aboard and, and uh, has his son pretty much take over the business for him. Um, and the son steps right in and uh, takes over the father's business carrying on his tradition, doing things uh, the right way. And then his son is called overseas on business. And uh, all of a sudden, the father calls you, the adopted son or daughter, into his office and says, I need you uh, to take over the business while Billy's out of town. Um, I'm gonna give you power of attorney. And so you have the right to run this business and do everything uh, in my place, in my name. And uh, the rules of being a power of attorney are that you handle the affairs of the one who's giving you that power uh, with their best interest in mind. Nothing you can do uh, should be for personal gain. Uh, no decisions you make, no business decisions you make should lead to your personal gain. They are only in the best interest of that uh, person that you're, you're in charge of, their estate or their, their possessions, their business, whatever it is. Uh, these are the rules of the power of attorney. Businesses strive to hire and uh, promote trustworthy employees that will protect the business's assets and and not seek personal profit through shady dealings that's that's just business as a postmaster years ago for the United States Postal Service um, I was entrusted to do requisitions to do banking and to do other transactions on behalf of my employer those transactions had to be completely separate from any of my personal affairs and they were to be done solely in the best interest of the United States Postal Service. That's just the way it is with a business. 
Um, when I was hired at Grace, the same was true. I was to act in the best interest of Grace Evangelical Church and nothing, none of my personal uh, affairs should, should uh, be uh, a part of that and I should look for no personal gain in no way in any decisions I make. That's just what businesses do. And I believe that's what's implied when we're instructed to ask anything in Jesus' name. If you remember following um, Jesus' death, burial, and resurrection, he sent the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit to draw us into a relationship with the Father. And when that happened, we were then adopted into his family we were joint heirs with Jesus. We were brothers and sisters with Jesus. And now we're given power of attorney over the Father's affairs in, he's, in Jesus' absence. And that one day he'll return, as we even talked about yesterday at church, and he'll take the business back over, and he'll make everything right. Any bad decisions we make, he's going to correct. But until that glorious day, we are to carry out the family business. And all of our requests should be in the best interest of God the Father and of Jesus to bring glory to them who are seated in the heavenlies and to them alone. Now when Jesus was on earth, if you remember, he lived to do the will of his Father. Why did he perform miracles? Wasn't it so the Father would be glorified? Didn't he say birds have nests, something to that effect, foxes have holes, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head, something to that effect. Everything, if you think about Jesus' like life, everything he did, everything he did was to glorify the Father. Brothers and sisters, he was showing us how to live selflessly. He was showing us that when he's gone and we take over the family business, we are to do everything to glorify the Father and to glorify Him as He is now glorified with the Father. We live in a tough world, but I believe it's time for us to divorce ourselves from the world and, and really all its fatal attractions that it, that it throws at us daily. May we be found trustworthy as we now hold the responsibility of seeking those who are lost and leading them into a relationship with Jesus, really bringing them into our family. It's a tough call. It's a tough call, but it's true. This is true religion. This is true Christianity, that we live for the Father, that we die to ourselves. You know, when you think about it, he died so that we could live. And he's asked us to die to ourselves so that he can live through us. He's allowed us to live for eternity and all he's asking us to give up is our wants and desires so that he can live through us and affect more people for eternity and grow the family. And that's, that's a tough, we, we live in an in a age of a, I think a deluded religion. And uh, It's not easy, folks. It's not easy for me, um, but I think we should raise the bar for each other. We should lift each other up. We should encourage each other uh, to be more Christ-like, to be more eternal-minded, uh, and less focused on the things of this world and see how much we can cram into this life, how much we're going to miss out on. Uh, we're not going to miss anything. We're not going to miss anything. The place he's preparing for us is beyond our imagination. It will blow our, our, If we had earthly minds when we get there, we won't. We'll be heavenly bodies when we get there. If we didn't, we'd, we'd be so blown away. Yeah. I don't know what, what, I don't know what else to say, but let you go for your week. I'm sorry to keep you so long, but as we start this new week, let's align ourselves completely with our Heavenly Father so that anything we ask uh, for His kingdom and His glory that will be the that will be the basis and the the desire when we pray is for things that will glorify Him. And when we go into the community and when we go into uh, downtown and we pray for our city and we pray for the lost, 
there is no question we're praying in his will. He desires that none should perish. As long as we keep our focus on others, we're going to be all right. We can have complete confidence that what we ask in his name for his glory will be done for us here on earth even as it is in heaven. So thanks for bearing with me. And uh, I know that's not an easy message, but I encourage you. That's what he's called us for. And, and the, the blessing, the blessing of serving our father um, is greater than anything we can bless ourselves with. I promise. I promise you that. Let's pray. Father, we're so grateful that you love us, that you've called us, that you've entrusted us. We know how untrustworthy we are, and yet you trust us. You've given us a power of attorney over your affairs and, and ask that you carry on the family business uh, until you return home. That is unbelievable, but true. So, Lord, give us the tools. Send us your Holy Spirit that we might be faithful, that we might uh, uh, be able to uh, focus on you, that we might be able to get our eyes off of ourselves and off of this world and uh, look for ways to impact eternity. Continue to give us a heart for prayer. Continue to give us that desire to spend time with you, corporately and individually. Continue to give us a heart for the city and the world. And uh, would you be glorified? Would the kingdom grow? Because we're growing to be more like you. In Jesus' name we ask. Amen. God bless you all. It's been a pleasure spending the morning with you.